In today's video, I'm gonna teach you a really useful lesson about repetition and how you can use it while you're improvising. And I'm also going to teach you two short songs. One of them I'm gonna demo for you right now. Let me jump into the studio so you can check it out. Hey friends, Jonah Fox here. Before we get started, I want to let you know about my free scale cheat sheet. It's a free PDF that you can download and print out, and it's going to show you all of the main harmonic scales and how to practice them. In my opinion, scale practice is like the most beneficial thing that you can do to improve your harmonica skills. It's going to help you play better, bend better, improvise better. It's really important, and you can find all of the information that you need to get started with it in the scale cheat sheet. You can check it out in the description below. Hey guys, I got a confession to make. In the past few years, I haven't been playing the harmonica like I used to before I started this channel. Producing content every day and working on my paid programs has taken a lot out of me, and when I'm done with my work, I usually pick up a guitar when I want to learn something new and novel. I mean, I've still been playing harmonica, but I haven't really been digging into the catalog, you know? This is the 100th video on the channel, and with that, I'm going to shake things up a little bit. For the next couple months, I'm going to be digging deep into the catalog of blues harmonica music, learning a bunch of songs, and then showing you guys what I discover along the way. And I also want to bring some of this music to you in a more digestible format, because it's really not that easy to go and, you know, pick a random blues song and learn it all the way through. So I'm going to try to make this a little bit more simple for you to pick up as well. Cool. The first song on my list is Ash Street Boogie by Forest City Joe, which I'm taking from the Blues Harmonica Instrumentals playlist on Spotify, which is really good. I'll put a link down below in the description. If you haven't taken some time to really listen to old blues harmonica music, you're really missing out. There's a lot of cool things to talk about in this song, but one thing I really like is the use of repetition to take a simple harmonica riff and then build a whole section from it, really focusing on the groove and the rhythm. Let's talk a little bit more about repetition because it's super important that you understand this when you're going to improvise. So in general, people love repetition. Think about a song that you really like. You probably think about the chorus. That's the part that repeats over and over. I don't know why, but it's really satisfying for our monkey brains to expect something and then to get it. It's what makes music so satisfying in a lot of ways. It's also really fun to expect something and to have our expectations broken in some way too, which we'll talk about later. As a musician, this is really good for you because it means you have the option to simplify your playing and just repeat something at all times. You don't always need to play something new. Get that into your head. You don't always need to play something new. In fact, if you're always playing something new, it becomes less memorable. Let's take this a little bit deeper. Here's a few ways to use repetition when you are improvising. Number one, instead of always playing new sections, try to find a repeating hook instead. So as you repeat that hook, like a little phrase that you can kind of repeat over and over, you can build upon it. Like you can change the notes and try to add new sections like I go over in a lesson that I'll link at the end of this video, but you don't have to. You literally can just repeat one simple part over and over. One thing I think that's really helped me with this is that I'm a bass player as well. One thing I love about the bass is the to focus on playing repeating bass lines. When you are playing bass, you want to find a groove. It might take you a couple of loops to come up with something cool, but once you do, you lock it in. You feel the groove. You keep it going for a while. There's not all this stress to come up with new ideas. And when you're playing bass, you don't need to be complicated. You just need to be in the pocket, right? You need to be keeping up with the groove. You know, as a bass player, you're the foundation of everything that comes on top of you, right? I think that you should try to borrow this mindset a little bit on harmonica. When you're playing, just try this. Find a cool, simple, repeatable phrase that has a good rhythm and just dig into it. Keep it 
it repeating. Try to focus on the execution more than just the notes that you're playing. You don't always need to be innovating. Sometimes it's nice to do something familiar and hear how that sounds as the music goes on. For number two, when you are repeating a riff, building on what we just talked about, you don't even need to worry about making it match the chord progressions or take this weight off of you. Many harmonica players think you always have to be following the chords, especially in a blues song, but that's simply not true. In fact, if you follow everything perfectly, your playing will sound safe mm. and by extension, kind of boring. So when you find something to repeat and you are are playing and the chords in the background change, you don't need to always follow them. Just keep on grooving. There's some cool examples of this in Ash Street Boogie. That was the song that I learned. And if you decide to take a listen to it, I think you'll hear some fun examples of this. Just know that sometimes leaning into repeating parts can be really cool when they don't perfectly match up with the music. Some of the fun of music is actually just ignoring what sounds good and really stable. That's how you get the spice. For number three, you can make new parts by repeating a groove or the rhythm, but not the notes. Let's say you're playing this riff. Here's what I got for you. Okay, that's the general riff. I'm gonna repeat it a few times so you can get the feel of it. We start out with two draw, three halves of draw bend, four blow, four draw, three half step draw bend, three blow, two draw. Okay, now if you keep playing that same pattern, da 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 da, but you change the notes, you can turn that into a whole song if you want to. Here's an example, you can consider this as a bonus, I'll put the tabs on the screen. Here we go, one, a two, a three. Let's take this a step further and try learning a relatively simple but really fun 12 bar blues boogie pattern inspired by Ash Street Boogie. My cheap knockout version is called Smoke Street Swing. Totally original, right? This is on a C harmonica, it does not include any bends. Here's the main riff that we're gonna repeat. So let's look at the tabs. You may notice the pound or hashtag symbol next to some of the notes. That is the notation I'm going to use going forward for a tongue slap. These can only be done by tongue blocking players, though puckering players can create a good approximation of this. A slap is when you start with an open chord. Let's say you're playing two, three, four draw. And then you quickly put your tongue on the comb like you're playing four draw as a single note. It creates that cool kind of rhythmic effect. It creates a little bit of a delay in your note. You hear the chord coming in, so it adds a little bit of subtlety and it kind of has this cool like suction effect. So that's why I like playing slaps and pulls and this song uses a ton of them. So those are slaps. Puckering players can approximate them, like I said, but I won't go into this today because frankly, I haven't spent enough time on it myself, but I will link an Adam Gusso video that covers this technique if you're curious down below in the description. For now, if you're not a tongue blocking player, just play this straight like this. Okay, that's it. Now we're gonna repeat this for every time that the music is on the one chord or the G, right? Now, the fourth time around, when we get there, we're gonna subvert expectations a little bit and end on the five draw like this. It's kind of fun to come up with a repeating pattern and then break it just occasionally enough to get people's attention. So here's the first four times around. Okay, now when the music goes to the four chord or the C in the key of G on a C harmonica, let's play this. We're gonna do four blow, five blow, six blow with the slaps. 
Notice that we're playing a new part, but we're really using the same rhythm as before. This is like I went over earlier in the video. Then we go back to the first riff. Then we move to the five chord. Let's play this. Three draw, four draw, five draw. Back to the four chord pattern. And then back to the one chord riff at the end. We're gonna end with a very common turnaround lick that goes. If you don't bend, you can do uh, two blow instead. Okay, so you can just substitute that in there. Here's the whole thing with a custom backing track that you can download that's in the description. This is a shorter version for YouTube. If you're a student in my Blues Harp Success program, you will get a more complete version of this tune with a backing track, loops that are available at multiple speeds, and standard notation with tabs when they're ready. If you wanna learn more about my course, there's a link down below in the description. But let's go and get started, check this out. you enjoyed that. If you want to learn how to make variations on the riffs that you're repeating and kind of take something that starts off pretty simple and build it into something really complex and interesting, then you should watch this video up here. I think you're really going to enjoy it. See you next time. Peace.